In assignment 15 on creating the computer terms glossary, I give you an Excel spreadsheet in the Canvas assignments area that contains the term and the definition as our key value pairs. And here's the Excel spreadsheet. So I have the terms and the definitions, and I think there's 69 total. They're not in any particular order because you really don't need to sort your glossary because if you add terms to it, you cannot sort the glossary once it's created. So we'll use the sorted method in loops to put things in alphabetical order, but we're not going to actually do a physical sort of our glossary, nor can we, of changing the data that's recorded in RAM. So it looks like you have to copy and paste and make changes to all that from Excel, such as putting in your single quotes around each of the keys, around each of the definitions, putting in that colon and so forth. And no, you do not have to do that. I'm going to show you how to take the data from Excel, write a little formula in Excel that will create this format for the Python code. And you can use this method of using Excel to write all kinds of code, whether it be in Python, C Sharp, Swift. I have another video from my ActionScript class on how to use Excel to write code. I use Excel for data oftentimes that I need to hard code in, and I don't want to have to type it and it has to be in a particular format. I'm going to let Excel create that format for me. So let me just run this program. And you can see how there's all my data is here in terms of the terms and the definitions. Notice that each of the terms or the keys made uppercase. And the reason I do that is when the user is entering a term to search for, they don't necessarily know what the casing is. And it's easier if the casing is exact. So for example here, I have them enter a computer term to look up. To look up, I just simply change that to uppercase, and then I can do an easy find of my key within the dictionary. Let me run this. So I'm just going to type in bit as my term to look up, and I'm told that a bit is a single digit in a binary value consisting of either one of a zero or a one. Let me run this again, and this time I'll look up cross platform, and I'm told the applications that run on multiple operating systems. For example, Python programs run on Windows, Mac, and Linux operating systems. Okay, so in writing your program, my suggestion is let's create our dictionary with a set of empty curly brackets, and then we're going to paste information from Excel into that to populate our dictionary. So I have another column here of D, which can be my Python code to add a dictionary, and I'm going to take this first one and actually I'm going to narrow this up a little bit so we can see that full column. And here I'm going to write a formula starting with equals and I want a literal string. So I'm going to use a double quote, a single quote, and a double quote. So it's a literal string of a single quote. The concatenation operator in VBScript is the ampersand. And so I want to concatenate the value that's in A4. So I'm just going to click on that cell another ampersand. I want to conclude that with a single quote. So inside double quotes, single quote. I want a colon. And I want a single quote for the definition and a double quote to end that literal string. Ampersand. My definition. Ampersand. Double quote. Single quote. Comma. Space. Double quote. Now I want to change that A4 to uppercase, so I'm going to add a method of upper with parentheses around A4. I'm going to press the Enter key, and notice what I get now is a byte in all uppercase, in single quotes, a colon, and then in single quotes my definition, a collection of 8 bits having a decimal equivalency in the range of 0 to 255, followed by a single quote, a a comma, and then I added a space there. The space is optional. Now, I don't have to write that formula for all these others. All I need to do is click on that cell, grab the little square here, the fill down box in Excel, drag down. I'm going to come down to my last row, which is Zettabyte, and it creates all those for me. And now I'm simply going to, with all those selected, I'm simply going to copy control C, go back into my Python code, and paste, control V. And there's all my data 
from Excel. And it's all in the proper format, term capitalized, in single quotes, colon, and then the definition of single quotes followed by a comma in that key value pair. Now, as you look at this, there's a few problems here. And you'll notice that here my A is in dark, is in black text rather than the green associated with literal strings. And that's because of the sing, use of single quotes inside that definition. So I need to add a backslash in front of each of those single quotes to make those escape characters. And it happens a few other times in this code. So for example, here I have um, on key logger that records a users and I have an apostrophe S. I need to put a backslash in front of that apostrophe. Same thing on fish. And then on hexadecimal, I have two around the word hex. And then at the very end of my list, I have a comma, which would mean there's another key value pair coming. Well, that's not the case. I want to get rid of that comma. And I think just to clean this up a little bit, I'm going to take the closing curly bracket and just move it up to the end of that line. So that little trick just saved you at least an hour's worth of time of typing that all in, and it eliminates the possibility of making typographical errors. It's kind of a pain to have to put everything inside uh, single quotes or double quotes as far as your string values in hard coding that dictionary population. So I let Excel do that hard work for me, and I, I pretty much assure myself that there's not a typographical error or something that I miss. Let me run this again, make sure this still works. So I'll type in binary. Now I didn't create an if structure here that if the term does not exist, it's gonna create an error. Uh, when you do your, your actual project, you wanna make sure you check that the term exists. For example, if I just type in um, South Mountain, obviously that's not a computer term. I get an error because I wasn't actually running my program. Let me run my program again. So I'm going to look up South Mountain. And I get an error because I can't find the term. So you'll want to use an if structure here to make sure that term exists in the dictionary before you try to print the term. And if it doesn't exist, then you're going to tell the user that term does not exist. Try again. Let me run this one more time. And this time I will type in um, domain name. And so I'm told that's the unique registered name of a website. So that's how you can get code from Excel into your project and letting the computer do the majority of the work for you. I'm going to show you one more example in Excel. And this time I'm going to create a list. So I have a second sheet here where I have, uh, this is going to be a multi-dimensional or two-dimensional list of a city, the low temp for a day and the high temp for a day. And I want to put those values into a list, into a multi-dimensional list. So here I'm going to have this equal quote. And I want to put this in square brackets. I want my city inside a single quotes. Close that literal string. I'm going to do an ampersand. Click on the cell that I want, which will be my city. Ampersand, quote, single quote, comma, ampersand, close my, close my quote, ampersand, my low temp value, ampersand, a little string of a comma, ampersand, my high temp, concatenate to that, quote, closing square bracket, and a comma, and I'll put a space. I'm going to press the Enter key, see what we have. So there we have our first row for our multidimensional list of, in brackets, Phoenix inside of single quotes, my low temp 67 and high temp 92, comma separated, my closing square bracket, and a comma to separate this element from the other elements. So on this one, I'm going to go ahead and fill down but then I'm going to modify this a little bit. And if, after my equals, I want to have it equal the previous cell, D5, 
and then an ampersand. Press the enter key. And now I'm getting both of them on that line combined with a comma separating the two. And I'm simply going to fill that one down. And then I get all my values for those five going across to one line. I could have done this on multiple lines. But now I can copy that. I'm just going to click on that cell D9, Control C. I'm going to go back to Python. And let's say we want to create a list. So I'm going to call this one temps equals. And then I'm going to paste. I want to put the whole thing inside of square brackets since it is a list. I'm going to get rid of that last comma. All right, and then I'm going to print. We'll do a placeholder zero. Had a low temp of. We'll do placeholder one and a high temp of placeholder two. I want to format. And let's say we want to show the show low value, which would be uh, element number three. It's our fourth element. So I'm going to take temps, element three, element zero. This can be our city. Temps, element three, element one. And that's going to be our low temp. And temps, element three, element two, that's our high temp. Parenthesis to close my format, parenthesis to close the print statement. I'm going to comment out my term and, and the print statement above because I really just want to focus in on this temp list at this point and not have it require us to put in a dictionary term. Let me run this. I'm going to save. And so there is my output. Sholo had a low temp of 49 and a high temp of 66. I recommend using Excel to format your data when it's going to be hard coded into a program. If you just jumped into this video and haven't seen the prior videos to this, I invite you to check out my Python playlist of videos. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos that I create, you can click my picture up in the top right and subscribe to the channel.